Now, what we have discovered in the last 20 to 30 years, progressively more and more, are the role of myokines. Right? So myokines are messenger molecules. So a cytokine, some people have heard of cytokines mm -hmm. now because of COVID mm -hmm. and the cytokine storm, right? They're basically messenger molecules. So you have inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines. Myokines are a subclass of, of these messenger molecules that are released in exercising muscle. We know that inside the muscle, they have autocrine and paracrine, which, which means that they, they act on the cell itself and they act on neighboring cells. But then they have endocrine effects, right? Um, like hormonal mm -hmm. effects. They spill out of your muscle. Inside the muscle, they make your muscle bigger, faster, stronger. Outside of the muscle, they get into your bloodstream and they impact on your target organs, right? So what we now know about myokines is that they improve how your pancreas functions and, and produces insulin. They improve how your liver um, processes glucose, reducing a risk of diabetes. They improve your entire immune system and how that functions. There are certain myokines that kill tumors as well that are protective against cancer. There are myokines that, that impact upon your gut microbiome, which then impacts upon all of your physical and mental health. Um, there's myokines that actually increase your bone density, your capillary networks. And then in the brain, you have uh, myokines, arisen um, that gets released in the brain, lactate that you get from, mm. lact people think about lactic acid. Yeah. That actually crosses the blood-brain barrier, this lactate, and triggers it and arisen in through two independent pathways, trigger the release of BDNF in the brain. Mm. BDNF, I'm not sure if your listeners have ever heard of yeah, it. Yeah, it's come up on the, yeah. on the, on the sh uh, episodes where we've spoken about uh, brain health. So BDNF is called brain-derived neurotropic factor. What does neurotropic mean? Nerve growth. We know that if you put BDNF on uh, brain cells in the test tube, they grow like crazy, right. right? It's been called miracle growth for the brain. Like fertilizer. It's fertilizer. There are drug companies all around the world right now trying to synthesize BDNF and get it into a pill form where it can be taken and cross the blood-brain barrier. The first drug company to take a patent out of that I will sell my businesses, I'll sell my house, and I will pawn my children, and I will buy shares in that company. Until that point, the best source of BDNF is exercise. Mm. And it's related to exercise intensity. It's around lactate threshold that BDNF spikes, right? And it's a really interesting study that with you put rats or mice in a water maze, and they hate water, right? So they really try very, very hard to get back. If you do prior running wheel, and put, get them on a running wheel, and, and then you can take little parts of the brain and look at it, and you get higher BDNF, they do better on, on memory, right? Mm. Actually, I thought about this one day. This is, a, this is one of my hypotheses, right? Why would BDNF be a spiked so much around lactate threshold? And then I thought, well, when would you produce lactate back in evolutionary times? And hunting or something. Hunting or running away. Right. So your brain makes real sense that your brain would actually release this stuff that goes, remember where this shit is. Mm, even foraging. Foraging, absolutely. Hunting, gathering, right? Mm -hmm. When you find food, boom, mm -hmm. remember where this is. Mm -hmm. So, um, or when prey, a lion jumps out to eat, remember where this is, right? So that for me makes sense. And, and it, was, it was corroborated by that rat study that showed that their spatial memory actually improved. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I, I digress. So, so the, these myokines are hugely important. Mm -hmm. And when we lose muscle mass, and as I said, 3 to 8% per year, and you know, by the age of 75, most people have lost half of it. You've just mm -hmm. lost a whole heap of medicine. And so, the myokines, just to rewind one, one bit, they're actually being produced Within the skeletal muscle? Within the skeletal muscle. Right. And they escape mm -hmm. outside of the muscle, right? So autocrine and paracrine is mm -hmm. impact within the cell and within the next door neighbor and cell. And are they being produced mostly from resistance training or just any Both. type of exercise? Any type. It's just contracting muscle. Now, I haven't seen studies yet that are like, what's the optimal gotcha. for the release? Because there's a whole heap. We, we now... You know, there's over 600 myokines that have now mm. been discovered. We only know what about 60 of them do. Two of the most important are interleukin-6, which is an anti-inflammatory myokine, and BDNF, which some people say isn't a true myokine, but it is ultimately mm. downstream of myokines. Um, 
But there are a huge amount of Maya kinds that do all sorts of different things. Now, Benta Peterson is a legendary exercise physiologist, and she released a study a few years ago that showed that exercise should be prescribed as therapy for 26 different chronic diseases. So the, her lab showed that exercise can either prevent and or treat 26 of the most common chronic diseases. Can you imagine if there was a pill mm. that we could take that would simultaneously reduce our risk of 26 chronic diseases? Mm. It would be the best-selling product that human beings have ever produced. But it's free, and it's exercise, right? And so... But it requires behavior change. It requires behavior, and it's difficult, mm. right? And, and that's the thing. Mm. 